Hey everyone, welcome to the E2 Effective Elders podcast. Visit us at e2elders.org and please share this good word with others. Hey friends, I want to thank you for uh, joining us in our E2 podcast this week and our thanks as always to CDF Capital for making this possible. You know, uh, I just want to take 10 minutes. I'm going to try to get this good word to you in 10 minutes or less and be thinking if you happen to be in ministry, if you are uh, a pastor, if you are an elder, think about with whom you could share uh, and use what we're about to hear in these 10 minutes. If you are a leader in the church, a volunteer, whether that's one of the guys or one of the gals, think of how what we are about to hear can be shared to make a difference, uh, bringing uh, encouragement to people. Now, here we go. All of 2022, uh, we are calling a good word. At E2, we want to bring you a good word to build you up in a society, a culture right now that seems to be so determined to tear you down. And each month, At E2, we have what is called a good word, if you will, of the month. And this month of May, the word happens to be priority. Now, this priority mailer, we're not going to put bulk mail or uh, media rate mail into it. No, the mail that goes into it is of greater importance, of greater importance. And what I want to share with you today in 10 minutes or less, as well as next week, 10 minutes or less, is of greater importance. Think of this. The majority of Americans believe that there is something fundamentally wrong in the United States, that life today in America is so very broken. We look at inflation, the highest it's been in 40 years, the price of gasoline and food, the supply chain is so uh, undependable. Formula cannot be obtained for babies in America. Uh, We're looking at dysfunctional government, particularly at a federal level, as well as at state and local levels. We're looking at drug and drink addictions, all manner of addictions. We're looking at an uh, unstable border uh, into the United States. We're looking at dysfunctional families. We're looking at broken marriages ending up in divorce. We're looking at division, not only across the country when it comes to political ideology. There's division in the church. Life today in America seems to be so fundamentally broken. And here's the question, why? Why is it? I believe that one of the answers to that question why comes to us from the American Bible Society. The American Bible Society recently published the results of their 2022 survey. And uh, you can see this at Christianity uh, Today. Uh, Here's a link for that. You can also uh, just Google uh, this phrase, 26 million Americans stopped reading the Bible regularly. Roughly 26 million Americans have stopped reading their Bible on a regular basis. And I'm here to tell you, I believe that's one reason why America looks to be so broken right now. Think of it this way. In Matthew chapter 7, the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount, beginning in verse 24 through 27, Jesus said, Jesus said, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. It appears that one life after another is falling with a great crash. And why is that? We are not hearing the word of God and putting it into practice in our lives. You know, Amos, uh, a minor prophet who was uh, giving God's word prior to the exile when Israel went uh, carried off into exile by the Assyrians. In uh, Amos chapter 8, verse 11, 
Amos, speaking on or writing on behalf of God, said, uh, there is going to be a famine, declares the sovereign Lord, uh, in the coming days. Not a famine for food or a thirst for water, but a famine for hearing the words of the Lord. I believe that what happened centuries ago is happening now. There is a famine for hearing the word of the Lord, and it's taking its toll on many lives. You know, uh, there are three unique words for scripture in the New Testament. Three very unique, different words. Ready? Here they come. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It's one of those famous 316s. All scripture is God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16, and that word scripture there is the word graphe, which means written. So all written scripture is God-breathed. God is the source for all scripture. This book right here, all right? Now, hold on to that thought, the written word of God. Here's a second key word, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, same chapter, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word, logos, for word, logos in Greek means embodied. So Jesus, he embodied. Jesus, logos, put on flesh and dwelt among us. Now, one more word, ready? Ephesians chapter 6. It's the famous spiritual warfare passage of the Apostle Paul. And in verse 17, he says, and take with you the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that word there is rhema in Greek, and it means spoken, the spoken word. Now, stay with me. When you and I read the word of God and we embody it, we put it into our minds, we memorize the word of God, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, Psalm 119. Uh, when we embody it, we meditate on it, we think about it, it will start spilling out of our mouths. We're going to start speaking it audibly. We're going to weave it into our conversations spontaneously. Why is that? Because in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, Jesus said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in our interior world, it's going to come out. If we keep filling ourselves with the word of God, now listen to this. Studies have shown that when a person is reading the word of God, and taking it into his or her heart, mind, and soul, and it starts spilling out of that person's mouth so that it's heard in his or her uh, conversations, when that is happening at least four times a week, that person will become more like Jesus more quickly than in any other way. Why is that? Because the word of God is... is uh, 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 supernatural. Isaiah 55, verse 11. It says that the word of God will go forth and accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. It cannot return void. You see, it's supernatural. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive. It's active, sharper than any two-edged sword. In Matthew chapter 24, just Moments before Jesus would go to the cross, chapter 24, verse 35, Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. They're eternal. This is what we want in our lives. It's eternal. So when I look at America today, and I understand that America is so fundamentally broken, it could be that it's because 26 million Americans, fewer Americans are in the word of God on a regular basis. And many of those uh, Americans call themselves followers of Jesus. They're in the church. So you and I, what if we were to challenge people to at least four times a week meet with Jesus on this, the printed page, taking it into our heart, mind, and soul so that it, it, it's embodied and it starts spilling out of our mouths and we enrich conversations with people. What's going to happen is we are going to be building our lives on solid rock and we will stand tall and strong when the storms of life strike. And my friend, that is a priority 
of greater importance. Please share this with friends. Share this with people who could preach this and teach this. Please share this so that life will become more full.